yes. The fielding juggernaut gathers steam. These are Christine's. This one's for you. Well, every vote counts. Get your muck-sucking pig face off my TV. Oh, it's a show that I love. Let me just tell you, a few years ago, Marsha Warfield had no acting experience, and now she's cracking people up on a weekly basis as Roz, the brash bailiff on the hit sitcom Night Court. And it's a delight to welcome Marsha to our show. Thank you very much. Are you well? I'm fine. You are. You're in town to do stand-up. Yes, I am. Is but not this early in the morning. I don't understand how you people do this. <laughs> it, it isn't easy. I don't, I don't get it. I doesn't, mean... It doesn't fit your schedule, huh? Not at all. I don't wake up till like 7. Till 7 at night? Yes. Well, you're doing all right half awake, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, but this is about it. It is true that a few years ago you had no acting experience. I mean, really, is it as amazing a story in real life as it is in reading about it? No. It never <laughs> is, is it? No. No. <laughs> I mean, I, I had limited acting experience, but I'm, I'm primarily a stand-up comic. You know, that's what I do, and, uh, and that's, that's what I've done for the past 15 years. So um, acting came later. In fact, my first role was a dramatic role, uh, on the Marva Collins story with Cicely Tyson, oh. and uh, I mean, they threw me into the shark infested water, so. <laughs> but if you um, can do comedy, you can do drama. Most people don't realize that. I don't know if that's so much true. Um, I don't know. I, I, I've been fortunate that, that it's, been, uh, it's been okay for me, but, but I mean, it's altogether different the kind of uh, emotions you have to pull on to make people laugh as opposed to the ones that, that make them cry. Go back to the days when you were answering a, on a telephone for an answering service before you picked up that first mic. Did you have that experience of doing stand-up the first time in a, it, just because you wanted to try it? Is that how it works? Well, I don't know how it works for everybody. That's how it worked for me. Yeah, I just decided I wanted to do it. I read about it in the paper, and uh, a friend of mine took me down to a, to a comedy club, and... Uh, the rest, as they say, is history. But the first few times got to be tough. I mean, it... it's always tough. I mean, you know, stage fright is stage fright. It never goes away. You know, there's always the chance that uh, all of these strangers won't like you. They love you on night court. You know, I've read a lot about the set and the, the way you all get along. I mean, it almost sounds sappy with the kissing and the hugging. Is yes. that true? Uh, well, sometimes, but then there's also a lot of, you know, Harry actually does have skateboards and run around and, <laughs> and play tricks on people. And, I mean, it's, we, we, uh, we work, you know, there's a lot of work involved, as I'm sure you know, but, uh, but we get along, and, and I think that's uh, reflected on camera. I mean, it's not just the cast that gets, gets along. We get along with everybody. Everybody has a lot of fun. Shows really don't survive when you don't. I don't think anything does. No work situation can be healthy if you don't like the people you're working with. Uh, John Larroquette, we were talking about him yesterday. Uh, I met him here. He's actually much more quiet in real life than he is in his character. I think everybody is. I mean, I think, uh, you know, that's the one thing that people tend to be shocked by. I'm a much more private person than Roz or, or than the stand-up character that I have to be uh, uh, when I'm, you know, just out and about. I'm just a person like everybody else and, and you and you have to preserve that or you go nuts because this is a crazy well, business you go nuts anyway yeah I mean. <laughs> it's true it's true marcia you walked into those circumstances right, you're a What's it? oh isn't this it says best friend on it yes aren't you neat i'll put it on you i, have a big, I don't know if i have a big head outfit. i don't care <laughs> i do really do have a big head you are wearing the most beautiful blouse well thank you this is rise's blouse i borrowed it from her. you did oh, do you get to do that take the wardrobe and have well, if you don't it? tell anybody, yeah. sure you do. <laughs> oh, my God, I really drove a big head. No, you have big hair. Is that a big, big hair? Big hair. Well, we'll make that go away. There <laughs> we go. Um, you, your experience on Night Court, it, it was amazing in that you took over. I can't ask you a serious question with this hat on yet. <laughs> you took over for two women who had lost their lives who were playing this role. Boy, it's a dangerous job, isn't it? But it must have been also poignant for you because I get the sense you've got a lot of depth to you. I mean, did you think about that at all? These, yeah, I thought about it, but I mean, I, it, it seems, you know, people ask a lot of questions, did you, uh, did it scare you, you know, and really the only answer is, are you crazy? I mean, look at it, I had no, uh, no work or, at that time, I, I wasn't doing another show and they, they asked me to do it, I mean, I had an opportunity that uh, though the circumstances were tragic, there was never any doubt that I would do it, I mean, and, uh, and I felt that, uh, you know, Selma and Flo, uh, added a lot to the show and they were very rich women and I, I, I met Flo before she passed away so I did get a chance to know them and I just think that if I could get a chance to work 
and perform for the rest of my life like they did, I think I'd be very fortunate. I don't think it's a negative situation at all. I hope that does happen to you. I have a feeling it will. Thank you. Um, you're, you give back uh, what you've gotten in life. Uh, you work with the homeless, don't you? You're from Chicago. I am from Chicago. I try to, you know, you try to do what you can when you have time. And uh, I have a program in Chicago, uh, an incentive program for uh, students. Uh, currently, it's just at my high school, at the high school I, I went to, and I, I think that we have to uh, motivate our own students. So I, I've developed an incentive program where the where five students in different categories, like the best all-around student, best student athlete, most improved student, um, and the valedictorian and the best uh, student performer, well, they get a cash award to do with as they will. I, I don't think that uh, that it really motivates kids to give them scholarships and stuff. What happens when you got all the scholarships and you need that new pair of Nikes or, you know, you want to buy your mom something for buying you all your graduation stuff and, and so I think... Well, what you do is you say you're special. That cash award means you've got something to give the world. Go go do it. And it's yours. That's great. That's great, Marcia. Well, so life's you. really good for you. It, it seems like, is it? I'd, after like 10 o'clock in the morning, yeah. <laughs> That's great. It's true. I don't think any performers <laughs> like getting up and doing this show. Now when you do stand up.